Welcome everyone, this is Simeon, and in this video I'm going to show you what's new in Chaos Vantage. We've added a few new things with the latest two updates, and the first one is the ability to uh, save transparency in the rendered output, and you can preview this by the transparency overlay option here. As you can see, the checkerboard indicates what's going to be transparent, and to save it, make sure that you enable this option when uh, rendering. Another option that we added for the environment is the ability to assign a different environment not only for the uh, background, but also for the reflection and refraction uh, background. And in this case, I can set up a new image and make sure that it's visible through the glass and in the reflections by having this option uh, checked. In this case, however, I'm going to be using the physical sky both for uh, reflection, refraction and background environment. In this update, we also added support for the clear coat layer in the Viri material, and it's available from this global checkbox here. We also added support for importing multiple cameras from the Viri scene. As you can see, the scene had uh, originally a few more cameras that were included in the Viri scene file, and they got imported together with the original one as well. So here are the cameras. At the bottom of the list, there are a few cameras that I've created inside of Vantage, and you can see that by the icons indicating that I can overwrite or delete those. Uh, the original cameras coming from the viewer scene files do not have those controls and cannot be overridden or deleted. Now on to 1.3. In this update, we added support for translucency in two-sided materials, and to demonstrate this, I'm going to uh, disable some of the daylight so that we can see how the um, interior lighting pops up. There are lights inside of the object, so let's go ahead and uh, disable the environment and uh, uh, direct lighting as well. There is a portal here. Okay, so now that everything is dark, I'm going to turn on the lights one by one, and you can see how the uh, two-sided illumination has brightened this up. The two-sided uh, material actually brights up and illuminates the whole interior. I can even change some of the parameters. Let's make it colder. And you can see the change immediately. Okay. Make it brighter a bit. But that is way too much. So I'm going to just undo the changes and uh, the color as well. Okay, let's go back to one exposure and bring back the lighting so that it's uh, yeah, daylight again and disable this sun. Okay. Another good example of translucency in this scene can be seen over here. And these are the curtains which are so thin that they pass light through them and the effect is clearly visible. Another great addition in version 1.3 is the NVIDIA AI denoiser. Currently, I'm using the native Vantage Denoiser, and as you can see, some parts of the image um, are really smooth, while others flicker a little bit. And you can see that over here in the candles, uh, even over here in the in the curtains. To compare the two denoisers, I need to switch uh, those. So we go into the preferences, render defaults, and here is the interactive denoiser uh, over here. The Vantage Denoiser provides great stability when navigating around the scene. It cleans the image quite fast, however, some artifacts may remain even after accumulating more samples. Now, the NVIDIA AI Denoiser, on the other hand, provides cleaner results when more samples are accumulated, but generates a lot of flickering artifacts when navigating around the scenes, um, and basically this is when there are not enough samples. You can see those artifacts as I'm moving the camera around, and uh, it's constantly flickering, but when I release the mouse button, uh, it cleans the image quite fast and provides sharper details. To try and improve this, we have added another option that uh, actually blends between the two denoisers, um, and it's called the combined option over here, which uses the Vantage denoiser for the first couple of passes, and uh, once you stop interacting with the scene or moving, it switches automatically to the NVIDIA AI denoiser. In this case, it switches after 30 samples. It's important to note that using the combined mode uses both the denoisers at the same time and occupies more memory. 
Another option that needs mentioning is the reduce the noise or flickering, which is turned on by default because it improves temporal stability and is especially useful when rendering sequences. And while we're on this subject, I'd like to talk about the statistics that we implemented in this window. It shows how much memory every feature occupies or uh, takes and uh, freeze if you disable that as well. It also shows how much memory you have available and how the resolution change affects the memory consumption. So let's close this. And I'd like to talk about one last thing, and this is the mouse and key shortcuts. They used to be in the help menu, but now they are in the edit. But this window allows you to remap any command to any shortcut that you would like to. Uh, for example, I can toggle camera recording by using a different combination. Uh, for example, uh, Control Shift R, uh, this is the default, but Control Shift W or any one actually. I'll reset those. The commands have been split in different tabs uh, according to the category. But the important thing that you need to know is that those grayed out um, commands for navigation cannot be remapped. So make sure that you only try and remap the ones that have not been grayed out. That concludes this short video. I hope you like the new features. Thanks for watching and take care.